Hi, this is Northern Kiwi, and welcome to our series on game development and project management. This video is going to show you how to set up a basic project in Microsoft Project 2013 right from scratch. Obviously, there's a lot more features involved in this than we're going to delve into, but we're just going to cover the key steps, such as setting up tasks, creating a resource, allocating the resource, you know, making some milestone dates, and yeah, that's basically going to be it. So, I've already got project downloaded. You can get a 60 day free trial from Microsoft. And you've got templates which have a lot of details in them, but for this one, I'm just actually just going to use a blank project. So, I'm going to first enter in my tasks. And what you notice is by default, when you enter in a duration, it defaults to days. If we want to go and modify this, what we need to do is go to the project tab and then click on change working time, go into options, and we've got a whole bunch of all options for to do with the entire project here. We've gone to the schedule at the moment. What we're going to do, duration is entered in hours, so we can sort of change that. We can change our default start times and end times for each day. Let's say we only want to work 20 hours a week. And we can go and modify a lot of other settings as well. But the main ones you really want to deal with is just in that schedule. So do that. Now if I go through, I delete that. And by default. It puts in the times, so I'm just going to fill in the rest of these. I've just got these from our previous exercise. Five, five, three. Doesn't really, these don't really matter too much. Not just examples. So we've got our basic times. Now, what we'll notice is all the little tasks have been allocated to bits of time, but you can also see they've got little question marks, because at the moment, none of these tasks have actually been given any definitive times. First thing I'm going to do is set in some predecessors. So, I'm saying that I need to get my storyboards done before I do the flowchart, so I can double click on this, go to predecessors, and from task name, I can choose my option. What I can also do is just type it in. So, learn Unity, that doesn't have anything, but in order to make the levels, I need to be able to have learnt how to do Unity first. Now, the graphics Unity models, I need to have both then learnt both Unity as well as done the graphics textures, so I can set both of them and what you'll notice on the side here is that it's now got two little arrows. So it's saying these two tasks, this task, and this task need to be completed before I can start this next one. So it's already automatically moving these along, unlike Excel where you've got to do all this manually. So it's very good for scheduling out your time. So that was a five. Oh, no. So text, that was dependent on that depending on those as well. Now the testing, this is what I need to have finished first. I need to have my graphics. I need to have the Unity models. I need to have the text and the game code finished. My documentation, I can do that all the time. And my testing and development is sort of yeah, that is going to be happening at the same time as I'm building the product. So it's automatically gone and built in all the times that we can actually work on the project. I can manually you know, drag these around and move them if I need to, but I'm not going to worry about that. So that's basically setting up a project. Very, very simple, very, very quick. Now, what we might want to do is actually allocate people or other resources. So I'm going to go into my resource tab, 
my team planner and I'm going to add a resource. So I'm going to add one in. I could add computers, people. So I'm going to add myself. Okay, I can do everything if I want to set times when the person's available and what they can do or how much work they're actually able to do. We can edit those details. So I've got myself in there. And I can I think it's project. I want to go in a view. Where's my Gantt chart? There we go. Now under the resources, I can allocate the resources. Now because these ones are dependent on it, it's automatically been fine. But when I do this next one, we've come up with this little red person. It's basically saying, hey, this guy can't really do both of these at once. So what we can do is if we right click on the person, we can reschedule them to another date. And so that will actually move them down so that, you know, we know that they're not working on the thing at the same time. Now we can continue to allocate all these resources all the way down. Shortcut is you can just use the letters. Now we've got all these tasks that have gone through and allocated. My documentation, I probably actually need to give that. I'm actually going to leave those sort of start dates out because I just want to leave it nice and sort of open. Now, one of the problems is, is it is a little bit hard to sort of schedule the two things when we can actually, you know, that we can actually work on at the same time. So you might want to actually add a second resource for, you know, you know, you part one, you part two. Because in real world scenarios, you're probably going to get one person that's just going to be in the storyboards and these other tasks. But obviously I can go through and, you know, reschedule these so that different things sort of start up. So I might have my, you know, development side and then my maybe training side and that training resources may be only available for that first period when it can be worked on at the other time. And other things we can do, we might need a deadline, such as the handover. And what we're going to do, go and edit this. No predecessors, well, predecessors will be, you know, let's say, the final bit of testing. And one of these is a milestone date. Mark task as milestone. So that basically means it has to be done. Let's just set that as a five hour. So that has to be done on that date, so it can be no later. So we've got now is a basic project set up in Microsoft Project, which then allows us, you know, to manage our time. Obviously, there is a bit more to it than this. Delve in, look at video tutorials. There's, you know, experiment, try out things. But when you're modifying it, make sure you save different versions just in case something goes wrong, so that you can go back to a previous version. This has been useful, and now we'll continue on with the next set of videos, which will be, you know, experimentation with Unity, and also some storyboards, which are, as you can see, according to the plan, that's what we're up to, learning Unity and drawing our storyboards.